So this is the cool little call the Tiguan elevator call. That's it. Time to start focusing on this work of Jewish astrology, a cosmic science. Torah Talmud and Zohar works on spiritual astrology. Circles, we've talked about that before. Circles within circles. This is Chacham Yaakov Cronenberg. I start calling him Chacham. He's a very, very nice, gentle person. Because of the work that he did, he was able to explain to us the combinations of letters that you see in the months. So over here, he's getting into, he finished that. He went through all 12 permutations, combinations of the name yud ke vav -Ke, and showed how they change in the months. And as we see, it's just a look if you're, what fall is like, what winter is like, what spring is like. etc. Now we're going to a more difficult place I think over here for me. So I'm going to begin reading and we'll see what we can do and, and I'm surprised to actually put a, I'm pull a light on this subject here. I'm really surprised that um, I'm able to follow this as well as I do. Because you know getting in reading Rabbi Memran and talking about physics and then coming over here and going through mathematical permutations, this was never my forte. So I just feel that God should help me to try to be able to understand what's coming up now. Now he says, it reads like this. Uh, so far we have learned that there are 12 ways to permute God's name. Where God's name has four letters and four letters can normally be permutated, permute, permutated in 24 ways. Now that's what it is. It's really uh, four letters, make 24 combinations. But he said, because the letter He in God's name appears twice, so you have to divide 24 by 2. And so the name of God can be permuted, permuted in 12 ways only. One per permutation from each of the 12 months of the year. So we saw this in part one and went through that. We also studied how the Ramak, who is Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, he was the chief rabbi of Tzfat before the Arizal. He learned how each of these permutations, that slash months, is different from the others in terms of the energies coming down. So what the Chacham here is saying is that he saw and learned the work of Rabbi Moshe Cordovero in this area. And that's where you really get the idea of how the different permutations work. So he says different from, so he says how they're different from each other's in terms of the energies coming down. We also cover, covered, so in other words, the flow of energy depends, depends for any season depends on at least that, and then many combinations after that. But we also covered the archetype, arc, archetypal, or archetypal chart of Adam Arishon, which has five letters to the zo zodiac, five levels of the zodiac. We're going to see it in a second. We also clarified how Western astrology only includes the first of the 12 houses and the second level which has the signs and the ruling planets. The third, fourth, and fifth levels of energies coming down in Adam's birth chart. So he says, then he says in parentheses, the tribes, the permutations of the same odd note, of the name odd note. So he says also there are filters here. So the filters are manifest first in the tribes. There are 12 tribes. So there are 12 different places of manifestations of the name yud ke vav -Ke. Then we have the permutations, which re actually represent them. And so we have a drawing down below. We'll maybe look at it in a second a little deeper again. The name of Adnut, also, which refers to Malchus. And the permutations of the name Havaya, they're not part of Western astrology. So if you read the, the Bible and you hear uh, talking uh, 
I forgot what I was going to say as I try to focus in on this more and what got distracted over here. Now, let me see if I can get around to the very beginning. And it's a little sideways, but here is the straight way of U at K above K. And that's the point of time that we're in right now. It's the month of Nisan. And I don't know how close we can get to this. How close can I get so that it actually is visible? Try to focus on it. So let's look at this, this right here. You have the Havaya, and then the next level are two words. Let's see, is, oh, is Adni, which is the name usually for Malch, Malchit, and, but he also includes, and he's not explaining this, I just want, I'm just looking at it. He says also a, a combination, a different combination of this name Adni, and it is Adin. Okay, I'm not sure what that would mean. This also refers to the tribe of Yuvain. It's the sign of Aries, and it's the house of, well, it's the ram. It's the house of Aries. So those are the levels. We haven't talked really about the level of the Adnis because they're constantly changing also, just like everything. This is a wheel that is spinning, and there might as well be that the wheel, this, the, the circle that's in the center is our Earth. And everything you see is circular. And as we said this before, is that the Kabbalists refer to this area, uh, that is, this world in which we live, as the Olam HaOfanim, Ofanim are wheels. So... We don't see it because everything's moving in tandem and we're very small in relationship to the size. But nonetheless, we're standing on a ball that is rolling and moving. Now, let's go on a little bit more. I'm going to have to come out of this. It's a little bit... Uh, so we got to look at the chart again, a little closer look. Now he's going to get start. He's going to start talking about the Chacham is going to start talking about the Yetzir Yetzira, and I think it's probably you know, this is the most ancient. He's going to say that he's in the most ancient of all Kabbalistic works. It goes back nearly four thousand years, and of course it was created by Adam by Abraham Avinu. But it's really telling the story of how all of this these wheels work. Let us talk about, the. oh, here we are, right here. The basic lesson of Adam's chart, which we were just looking at, comes to teach you that you shouldn't think that all the energies are coming from the planets or the signs only. This is a big, big part of Jewish astrology. As if they are the ones who determine what is happening down here on Earth. They are the conduits of much higher influences. And in, in, in Kabbalah, Kabbalistic language, the word higher means more panimi, more insight, closer to the source of all life, which is the Enz of Baruchu. They are the conduits of much higher influences. Everything really comes from God. And it comes, among other things, through the permutations of his name. Now, Imagine that God is a white sheet of paper, but it's it's that is all light, pure white light. And you take different combinations of lines and partial circles and make uh what would you say, templates of of words. First with letters, and the letters have to be or can be broken down. Uh, into mostly vavs, but that's what you see. That's what we see mostly is broken down into different kinds of vavs. And this actually acts as a filter between the light, which is that pure whiteness that's behind it, and on the other side of the letters, now you have something more tangible. That's the concept of, that's part of the concept of creation here. So Mukti through the permutations of his name. So the the basic conduit is the name Yud K Vavke. 
I'm just trying to reason according to what he's saying and trying to understand it for myself. So through these different permutations of God's name, the energies come down, the energies that are coming down are different in each month because the name also is revolving. All four of the letters of the name, Yud, K, Vav, K, they're all revolving too. So revolving, going around and changing like that is part of the world we live in. Now, let's, we're going to do one paragraph here, and uh, I'm going to try to digest what's said, what's about to be said. He says, let's talk about the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, the basic 22 Hebrew letters are important because according to our Torah, God looked into the Torah and using the letters, he created the world. The book Sefer HaYetzir, which is the book of creation, which is the oldest book in Jewish literature. It was written by Avraham Avinu, the first Jew, the first one who broke the mold and recognized what is really the real truth of this world. Categorizes the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet into three groups. Now, this is where it gets technical, and it take time to learn it. There are three elemental letters. Then he says the seven double letters and the 12 simple letters. The three elemental letter, letters, and he names them. They're the letter Shin, the letter Mem, and the letter Aleph. They're called elemental, love, letter, ele, elemental letters. And what do they represent? They represent water, which I guess would be the Mem for Mayim, air, which would be the Aleph for Avir, and fire, which is the Shin that comes from the word Aish. That's the way I see it. So he says the Sefer Yetzira, Yetzira does not include the fourth element of earth. The seven letters, that is, we said we had seven double letters. They are these letters, if you can see them, they're Toph, Resh, Pe, Kof, Dalit, Gimel, and Bet. What makes them double letters? And these double letters, he said, represent the seven planets, Saturn, Jupiter, coming out from the from the most out one out, outside one, which is Saturn, and then Jupiter, and going on until we reach the moon and, and the sun and the moon. And are summarized by the acronym of Bagad Kafrat. Now, this is part of the Sefer Yitzira, and this is taken to a certain extent from Arya Kaplan's work on Sefer Yitzira. And it says like this, and really what's being brought by the Chacham here are tremendous, and represents seven planets, he says, and summarized by the acronym Bagad Kafrat. Now let's look at Bagad Kafrat. One, one, two, I guess it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the big letters refer to the letters that are actually uh, Bagad, right, reading from left to right, Kafrat, Bagad Kafrat. Now, this is a new idea altogether, something that I've seen before, but it's not that easy to digest this new system. Now, all these seven letters are called doubles. Why are they called doubles? Because they can be pronounced in both ways. Either they can bounce hard or soft. So let's say, for example, a simple example is that the bet can be pronounced as a bet, or it could also be pronounced as a vet. It's a va. So depending on where the dot is in the word. And gimel can be pronounced gimel or jimel. I never, I haven't heard that. It doesn't mean that it's not out there. I just don't know that much. Or jimel, depending on where the dot is on, and so on. So these seven letters have a side of chesed slash love. And a side of din judgment, a slash judgment. That's what he's saying. He said that's what it means in double letters. It says that they represent like two lines of flows of energy. One is din, judgment, and the other one is love and chesed. So that's also the soft or the hard sign, like 
what did he say? Base, which is a hard sound, which is, I guess, going to be din. And then he could be vet, vet, base. And that would be the softer one. And that would be love and, and uh, chesed. All of those letters represent the seven planets. And indeed, each planet can be good or bad, depending on its circumstances. And that means that there are many other influences. Well, that's what I can learn today. This is Borg Fleischman, and you're listening to the Tikkun Elevator Call-Out.